Last year, over half a million immigrants came to Britain. We got told that we are allowed to live in England. For many who arrive, the council is the only hope of finding a home. Unfortunately, it's not everyone that comes to the council that gets help. Help me, help me. Give me something. But with the pressure on social housing already at crisis point... Everything is overwhelming, you know? Competition is high. Immigrants come over and they get housed tomorrow. Why don't you go back to where you belong? Guess how come half the British people can't get no help? And not everyone can get somewhere to live. I don't know whether we can help you. That's, that's just actually pissed me off a little bit. One thing to be on the streets back home. But to be in England on the streets, oh my God. As there aren't enough council houses to go round. Ron do not help me. Ron do not help me. Tonight, I sleep all the kids in the street. With Heathrow on its doorstep, the London borough of Hounslow is a gateway to Britain. It's now home to 250,000 people, and the council's facing a housing crisis. I'm not asking for a palace, I'm asking for somewhere to live. I cannot provide you with housing. Despite the housing shortage, every week more people arrive from abroad in need of a home. Four months, living rough, I mean, uh, we don't even know where, where to go. Getting a council house isn't easy wherever you're from even if you're homeless. Even tonight, I don't even know where, where, where you can sleep. There is a rise of immigrants who are approaching the councils for housing. That is putting additional pressures on housing officers, but we will only be able to help those people who are most in need. I haven't got a property to live. What else am I supposed to do? Soon to become available through the council is this rare terraced family home. But who deserves the keys the most? Ticket number 141. This is very stressful. 52-year-old <laughs> Lisa is from Bermuda. She arrived nine months ago and has been staying with a friend in Hounslow. Oh. He now needs his spare room back and Lisa faces sleeping rough. I cannot live on the streets. I can't. Hello. OK. Hi, good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm all right. My name is Uche. I'm a housing client services officer. I'm sorry. Why are you getting upset? I'm very upset. What's the matter? I'm going to be homeless tomorrow. Where were you leaving before? Felton. Before that, Bermuda. 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 Okay. Bermuda. How Bermuda. long have you been there for? Where in Bermuda? Yeah. My whole life. I was born there. Right. I'm British, though. We, as Bermudians, just, what, seven years ago got told that we are allowed to live in England. So I figured my life wasn't getting good there because I wanted to change and to see if I could make a better life. But as of tomorrow, my problem is I'm homeless yeah, and no. no money. OK, Lisa, you see, the problem is, the problem we're going to have today is we're looking at where have you been made homeless from, OK? Your last set of address is what we look at, which is the one okay. in Bermuda. So we're yeah, looking at that, and then we're looking at intentionality. Oh because you've God. given up a property, you've come okay. here, you've made okay. adequate Okay, okay, honey, just tell me what I got to do. Just tell okay. me what I got to do. I can, I I can advise you. Okay. You will need to start actively looking for a property in the private rented sector. So what happens tomorrow, then? We will not be able to put you up anywhere, unfortunately. <laughs> I am really sorry. I'm sorry. I cannot believe this. I can't. I will kill myself, OK? I can't. I'm British. You're supposed to help me. I've got to try and see if I can borrow money or something, because there's no way I'm going on the street. Everyone that comes expects to get help, but it's not everybody we can help. 
and if you give up an accommodation that is suitable for you and not made, made an arrangement for another suitable accommodation, you could be deemed to have made yourself intentionally homeless. Lisa will now have to find herself somewhere to live. Hello? And calls her friend in Bermuda for money. Um, OT, I'm in big trouble. They basically refuse to help me, so as of tomorrow, I will be on the streets if I don't get no money to... <laughs> they will not help me at all. <laughs> In order to receive help, all housing applications must meet the government's criteria. A lot of people do come to the United Kingdom thinking that is a better place to be. But the reality is, it's not that straightforward because there are criteria that you have to meet. Are they homeless? Have they made themselves intentionally homeless? Are they in priority need? We provide a safety net for people who are most vulnerable, um, for example, pregnant women, um, people with dependent children, and people with um, medical conditions. For EU nationals, it's even harder. They need to be employed or claiming job seekers allowance, which they can only do after three months in the country. 35-year-old Florin is from Romania and arrived two days ago for a better life. OK, uh, what's your name again? Florin. 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 Today, we're going to speak to the council. What yeah. do you want to say to them? One double room. One room? You'll be happy with one room? For me, I want a job. I want a, one job good for work. What, what kind of job can you do? Uh, everything. Today, local priest Roger Sorry. has brought Florin, his wife Liliana, and their five children to see if they can get a council house. OK, all right. Hello, good morning. Um, how can I help today? Well, on Saturday, the family came from Romania. This is five kids, two adults. And they were referred to us by the Metropolitan Police. OK. And then the police told them to come here on Monday. Right. They're coming here for a job. OK. Uh, and uh, for uh, one room, mm -hmm. yes. uh, they bring me kids here. Since their arrival, the family have stayed in Roger's homeless shelter in Brentford. Officially, we only take 14 men, but because of the severe weather, we had to take extra. So on Saturday, we were 20, and this homeless family. And it's so cold this morning and last night. They would have been on the streets if we hadn't have helped. Viața România este foarte grea, este foarte greu. Am venit doar pentru copii, pentru am da copii la școli. Some might say, why come here? But he has told me that he'd rather not be alive than stay in Romania. If I was him, I think I would probably do the same thing. Știu că Viața e schimbată în momentul că în momentul când ajunge aici. Și aș avea și eu un drept cum a avut uh, toți ceilalți. Thank you very much, Mr. Joe. I think with a minimal effort, I think we can help him. And I think he will invest into the local life of Britain. Uh, last year they were in the country for about four months. Okay. But my family stayed home. So the 20th of December, he went back to Romania and got the children and brought the children the first time here. My question now is, you came into um, the United Kingdom in September. Yeah. Where were you staying? Where? Here. What house were you staying? Yeah. Right. The first, first house here. So what happened then? Why did you leave? Because no have money. Tell me, lender, no have money. Sorry, you leave the yep. house. Yeah, and so you, you yes. left. Yes. After yeah. that, where were you sleeping? Oh, out. Oh. On the park. In the so park. you were, so you were homeless. You were in the park. Yeah. So you've been street yeah. homeless. Yeah. Were you looking for job? Yes. I'm looking for I'm look. Two weeks here. Two weeks here. Uh, as I understand it, he was working in a car wash. But then the thing is, do we have proof of this? 
You've gone back to Romania. Yeah. You don't have anywhere to stay in the UK, no. I suppose. And then you've come back with your five children. I just want to know, what was your plan? Forgive me. Hmm? No, Romania me. no. No, Romania no have home. No, no have nothing. I know. Right. Because of the story that you have provided me, sir, mm -hmm. I am in doubt that you might be eligible for assistance. For them to be eligible for assistance as an EEA national, they need to be working in the country. So <laughs> they're going to sleep outside on the pavement tonight? Julian? What is this building? Building? What is this for, for, for family? For uh, help me? For my kids? For children? It is very difficult on a personal level to say I can't help. You went back to your country, and then you've brought five children back with no arrangements whatsoever. Why drag the children into this? It's really sad. It's easy to say, on one hand, it's irresponsible, but I think the desperation sometimes necessitates what might appear to be illogical. I mean, uh, for one day, 12 hours when I work, and give me 15 pounds, 15. So about one pound an hour? Yes, yes, yes. I want to stay here. It's good. It's good life. Good life. Yes, yeah, this family need accommodation. I'm hoping just for tonight. With nowhere to stay, Roger pays for a local bed and breakfast. I will pay for the one night. It's not just about coming to the United Kingdom, we, you know, your children and hoping to get all the benefits in the world. We don't have enough social housing to go around. The family have a roof over their heads for one more night. The council, no. No good. No good. Help me, help me. Give me something. No help me. I sleep in the, in the street. The street, I sleep all the kids. Homeless applications in Hounslow have tripled in the last five years, but council housing stock is at an all-time low. He kicked me out at like half 11, 12 at night, and now I've got nowhere to go. Yeah, I'm police. Why are you here today? To get out of from, from, from the streets. Competition to get a council house is fierce. There's people out there sleeping homeless, and, you know, you get immigrants come over and they get housed tomorrow. The government are not thinking about the British people that have been born here. The common view that immigrants who approach the council are automatically housed, it is a myth. Anyone who approaches the council must satisfy the criteria, are you eligible, are you homeless, and do you meet a priority need? You are not eligible for our services. Is that fair? Half the rough sleepers in London are now foreign. One in ten are Polish, and one in five are Romanian. Florin and his family arrived three days ago and are homeless. So far, local priest Roger has kept them off the streets. Don't worry, it'll be OK. All right, we, we will make sure that we have a plan for you. Yeah? Hounslow Council refused to house them, and the Romanian embassy won't help either. They said England has um, enough problems housing England people. Why, why did you come here to add to the number? The primary responsibility is with the parents, I think, but they've had to make this judgment call because of their desperation. What would you do, viewer, in the same situation? 
I, I think many people would have done what he's done. Come this way, I think it's here. Running out of options, they head to the closest council, Kensington and Chelsea, hoping that they'll be more helpful. I received eviction letter uh, from the court. Right now, I will be homeless in 18 days. 31-year-old Monica is nearly 6,000 pounds in rent arrears and facing eviction. Right now, I really don't know where we're gonna be in three weeks' time, you know? We have no other option. She's struggling financially and is running out of time to find a new home for her family. When you have two little children to take care of, it's very scary, very stressful, you know? So hopefully, council will help us to find council accommodation. Uh, Monika Rogalska Mugisha. OK, and what's your nationality? Polish. What's your marital status? Married. Married, yeah. And what's his nationality? Uh, Ugandan. Ugandan. Monica and her family have been renting a three-bed house in Hounslow for four years. This is our little kitchen. <laughs> the main reason why I fell in love with house the first time I saw it was a space, you know? There's a big lounge. Children has a lot of space to play around. I'm not very happy that I have to leave the house, not really. <laughs> we pack some of the stuff, you know? But I am struggling a lot, but I'm trying to, to stay positive for my kids, you know, and carry on, carry on as normal. The family receive £280 housing benefit each month. Their rent is 1260 and they can't afford to make up the difference. Oh, no, don't break it. My husband working, you know long hours. I know he's worrying and stressing a lot because we try all we could to find a new place to rent something else but the prices are so high that we simply can't afford them. Oh you're gonna fix it. Well done, you did it. It's very hard for me when you have to go to council and actually begging them for help. It's quite kind of humiliating. Today we've made a homeless application and we as a council, we have to see whether you have become homeless because of your failure to pay yeah. your rent, whether you have made yourself intentionally homeless or not, or whether it had nothing to do with you. The reason why I'm getting evicted is because of my rent arrears. What is the reason that your arrears have accrued? In several occasions, my housing benefit was suspended for some time because my husband got more hours, more work. OK, and what kind of work is his? It's agency work, so it's like zero hours contract. Sometimes he works more hours, sometimes he works less hours. OK. So you're saying that the reasons it started in November time is because his salary was not enough to cover it? Yeah. OK, so I'm just going to leave it for there, yeah. Matt, today. And what if I don't hear from you or anyone before my eviction date? What, what should I then do? Then you can, can come to the council and say that you've been evicted. OK, then, thank you very right, much you for your time and help. <laughs> I know from my perspective that I didn't make myself intentionally homeless. Uh, I, I would never ever put my children through process like that, you know, intentionally. So my plans now are to start my inquiry, so I'm going to start with contacting our housing benefit department to see why benefit was actually suspended. I was saying, everything in this house is Polish. I never get to eat my African food. It's all Polish stuff. Their financial problems began when Monica's husband, Frederick, found a job. I went back to work. That's when all these uh, problems started coming in. I want to work. I want to better my life and my children, my family, my wife. 
But on his zero hours contract, he's not guaranteed full time work, meaning his income varies and they struggle to pay their rent. Would you be better off if you worked less and were at home yes, more? Yes, I would be better off. The council has 33 days to complete their inquiries. Monica and Frederick will have to wait to see if they can get a council house. Kensington and Chelsea Council have refused to help Florin and they have nowhere to stay. Listen, we're trying to help you, man. Guys, no, don't go. Ten. No, I think, yeah, listen, I'm, I'm fed up as well. I am fed up. Me, I'm fed up as well. You're fed up. This is crazy, 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 crazy. Yeah. Absolute. Okay, crazy. well, let, let's get you. But London not help me. Listen, London listen. not help me. F it's F two times, three times. Here. Cancel here. Cancel here. Okay. Uh, tonight, sleep outside. No, no, tonight is not. You can't let. Listen. I know he's tired and uh, uh, everybody's tired. Their last option is the borough's out of hours social services team. We have a 12 year old eight-year-old, seven-year-old. We've been traipsing around all day, etc. We're shivering out here. And this family is homeless. For some reason, he went home and then came back with the children, which was, of course, the fatal, one may argue, the responsible thing to do, you know. So I don't know what to do. How far away is that from here? Any idea from the town hall? OK. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. They will give you somewhere to stay. We're going to go somewhere like last night, and you can sleep. So let's go. Let's get out of the cold. For tonight, Kensington and Chelsea Social Services will place them into a bed and breakfast because they have children. The great consensus has been by all the professionals and people on the phone even that it was irresponsible of him to come in the first place with all of his kids. And I think I have to concur. Across the road from the council, Lisa's been staying in a and b She was refused help after leaving a home in Bermuda and is now homeless. Well, a friend of mine uh, sent money to help me so I wouldn't be on the street today and basically help pay for the rest of you know, last night and to, for tonight. My friends, unfortunately, can't keep paying rent for me to stay off the street. Nobody's rich like that, especially in Bermuda. Faced with a tough future because of a serious medical disorder, Lisa came to England for a more comfortable life. Like her mother, she's been diagnosed with fibromyalgia, a long-term condition that causes chronic muscular and joint pain. I'm a little scared. I am. I'm not going to say I'm not, because I am. Now, my poor mom, at the age of 70-something years old, it's hard for her to even move. You could see it written all over her face, the pain. I'm not here for the wrong reasons. As a British citizen, I am entitled to be here. In Bermuda, basically, to even get help from a disability or whatever, you have to be in a wheelchair. I have to think of me and what's better and good for my future, isn't it? And if England is the place to be, because I will get the help, and England is the place I'm going to be. Hoping to solve her housing crisis, Lisa's got a job interview as a live-in shopkeeper. If I don't get this job today, basically in what, maybe a day or two, I'll be on the street. <laughs> When I arrived here, I had basically just over 4,000 pounds. Whatever money I had is gone. There is no money. 
this has to work. This has to work. I'm feeling good, but a little nervous, but it's a good nervous, you know? Hi, Lisa. Hi, how you doing? This job could be Lisa's last chance to make her new life in England possible. I think it went pretty good. Basically, I'd be starting 7 o'clock in the morning in the shop till 5.30. Then from that time till 7, I would clean, and then the rest of the night is mine till the next morning. And I wouldn't be paying no rent and for no food, so... If this man tells me on Saturday I've got the job, then I will take it. It's eviction day for Monica and Frederick. After renting privately for four years, they're being kicked out of their family home. This is my eviction out here. I'm ready. You get, you get up the dress for every occasion, man. Any occasion. Sad or whatever it is. Let's <laughs> try to cover his, you know, emotions now. Huh? So I think, yeah. We're sharing the jobs, aren't we? No, I'm doing all the jobs. <laughs> You're right. Oh, yeah, they're here. Where, where are you going to go next? Uh, we're just going to go to Council now. Yeah, I'm going to miss the house. I think this house is going to stay with us, like, forever in our memories, you know? Yeah, we're going, honey. Our child was born here. It was only me and my husband. Sorry, we have to live like that. I know. It's OK. I know. It's OK, I'll get one. This last bit. Now I'm upset. I came here to this country to have a better life, you know? I didn't plan for this to happen. With a car full of belongings and nowhere to stay, their future now lies in the council's hands. Yeah, this is it. This is it. We're, like, literally homeless. Like, we're on the streets. Monica and Frederick have been evicted and are waiting to see if housing officer Hadra has accepted their homeless application. Are you okay? Today is cool. a very emotional day in Maria. Yeah, and, and I appreciate that. Um, however, I haven't made my decision yet. But you will be placed in a in a and b somewhere, so my colleague's now looking into where to place you because I know you're both working. Okay. And then I'll make a decision on the case. Okay. Yeah. The family have been temporarily housed in a bed and breakfast in Hounslow. The four of them will have to share one room until the council finish their investigation. <sighs> I guess it's going to be very challenging with two little children. Spilling already the drink. It's just really hard when you're coming from a big house to stay in one room and you don't even know for how long you're going to have to stay here and we feel a little bit disappointed. Florin and his family arrived in Britain four days ago. After already being refused by Hounslow Council, he's not giving up on finding a home for his family. Last time, housing officer Uche turned them away. I'm not sure what they're on this time, but um, unfortunately we can't help everyone. 
If you don't meet eligibility, then we can't help you. This time, Uche has arranged for a translator to help. Right, so people from other European countries, like yourself, need to maintain what we call a worker status, meaning that you need to be in employment. It doesn't work like that. No, but no, no, no. For you to be legible, you need to maintain your worker status. Okay. Do you have a contract, a job contract? No, no. If you don't give me information, I can't help you. Were you claiming any benefits? Job seeker. So you were receiving job seekers' allowance? Okay. okay. I'll give you. This time, Florin has brought his paperwork. Oh, gosh. Any other documents? All the passports to my report. Thank you. Do you have anything else for me? Uh, this is for uh, transfer, for school. For school in England. Really? You're already doing transfer, school, from Romania to England, but you don't even have a home for them? All right, I'll go make copies of them, OK? Just fall down, stay in the house. Stay in the house and stay in the house. Their future now lies in the hands of Uche and housing manager Basad. Are they in receipt of job seekers allowance now? This is the sign on papers. Apparently someone signed the sixth. After three hours, a decision has been reached. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Right, so here are your original documents. I've yeah. done my copies. So we will be looking for a property for you. It might not be inside of London. It might be outside of London. Yeah. We will send you there. All right, then? Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We've realised that they were signing off for JSA, Job Seekers Allowance, so that means they are maintaining their worker status, so that makes them eligible. Lisa's been kicked out of the bed and breakfast. She never heard back about the job and has run out of money again. <sighs> I can't do this. I'm cut old now. What am I going to feel like tonight and tomorrow morning? She's going back to the council for help before it closes for the night. What are we, what are we doing tonight? Uh, you do understand that we're not able to assist you. You do understand that. And who I, are you, dear? Well, I'm from the housing department. My name is George. I'm. I'm oh, I didn't know who you were. Well, You're talking okay, to me I, like I know you. I, I'm the duty manager today, and I need to yeah. see that everyone leaves the premises. I think so, it's rather disgusting how you don't help your own people. Right. Well, no, the, no. the advice that we've given still stands. Don't don't talk to me because I don't All know right. you. I've never dealt with you. Step away. Okay. Seriously, step away. I'm more British than you by the sounds of your accent. Kiss my fucking ass. Lisa's now stuck in England and has nowhere to stay. I'm going to die on the streets of fucking house, then. Hello? Yeah, ma. Okay, Mom. 
Okay, love you. Okay, love. I might be going home tomorrow or the day after. Lisa's mum has solved her housing problem. God. She's got her a room for tonight and a flight home in the morning. Oh, home sweet home, I'm going. Nice, warm sun. Monica and her family were evicted eight days ago and have been staying in temporary accommodation. While she waits for the council to reach a decision, she's looking for somewhere privately rented that would accept housing benefit. Dear Monica, unfortunately we do not have any landlords accepting the DSS frame at this moment. As soon as they find out, I just don't want to carry on, continue with you. The family's hopes of finding a home rest on getting a council house. But housing officer Hadra has uncovered some new evidence that could affect their case. The information that the council have got at the moment and the information from third parties is that there was a relationship breakdown um, from, between Monica and her husband. Their housing benefit was suspended after the council received a tip-off that Frederick had moved out. If Monica is withholding information um, from the council, then this will have a negative effect on her case. They may have been claiming housing benefit while Frederick was not in the property and have been called in for further questioning. The council wrote to you numerous times saying, can you confirm that your husband is still in the property? And your response was that he is still in the property. But at that time he was away. No. Someone, up to now we're still really upset about that, someone went and told council that I moved out of our house. OK. So the, the council stopped our payments. At the time, my mum was very ill. I went to Uganda. To, to, to see my sick mama. And I've not seen it in any council uh, paper given to us that if I'm to leave the country to go somewhere for, uh, to, 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 to see my sick mama, I should call the council and inform them. Your benefits being suspended was not the sole reason that you were in arrears. Your benefit was suspended after you were already in arrears. Yeah, the arrears were not that much. They were not that so big. It's something that I knew I would control. But what made the situation worse is when the council suspended our benefits. I contacted council explaining our situation that we cannot afford this house anymore. It's just too expensive for us. I don't know. We are already look at like guilty people who are making wrong decisions. Yeah, and yeah. you're trying yeah. to really now find the things no. to just point that we okay. are guilty. Can I I'm sorry, but it's just that's frustrating. Not, that's me. not the case at all. My job is not personal. My job is just to make a decision based in line with the law. Yeah. Once I've made a decision, I will contact you. I'm being made to feel like, you know, I, I made a big mistake to go and see my dying mum. That's it. Savine? Yes. Hi. Can I count as 18? Florin's back with his family to collect the keys to his new home. It's very, very hard to get four-bedroom property number. in Borough, in nine, Hounslow. Um, so our team have managed to find you something in Birmingham. Birmingham? Birmingham. Yes. Yeah, yes. and Birmingham. Yes. Birmingham's nice. Nice place yes, to yes, stay. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, very nice to stay. So you, you will not come back to Hounslow? Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. So you'll go straight to Birmingham now? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. no. no. Okay. Yes. All right, you happy, yeah? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Thank you. Very much. The reason we're not housing more people in Borough is due to properties not being affordable within London. So we try to help them in the long run to find an affordable property and a suitable property so they don't fall into the poverty trap. After two weeks in Britain, Florin and his family have a home to go to, 100 miles away. Bye. Do I think they should have been housed? Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs>
I think it's a, it's a, it's a yes and a no answer. It doesn't always seem fair, and in this case, I think the verdict will be open. There'll be some of you who'll think, well, we're glad for them, we would do the same. Others might think, you know, here's another case of the system, you know, being exploited. No. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, you will do anything to provide for your family. Uh -huh. I like this, uh, this city, Birmingham, nice. Maybe you stay here. Yes, it's nice, I like. <laughs> the council have found Florin a four-bedroom private rented house in Birmingham. Back in Hounslow, a house like this would cost £2,000 per month. In Birmingham, it's 750 Yeah, here. Oh, yeah. 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 living. Yeah. 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 Do you know there's a housing shortage here in Britain? No, I don't know. I don't know. Yes, I'm surprised, but maybe I was the only one of them in the corner. I've risked it a lot to get out of here. When you see the children that don't have what to eat, it's a pain. It's a pain. We couldn't support this life there. I have a home. Oh, that's my God. Yes, that's my God. Now I'm happy. Because it's finished, the stress. It's finished stress. Back in London, the council has reached a decision on Monica and Frederick's homeless application. Oh my God, it's really hard to describe even in words how I feel now. Very stressed. Today, they find out if they get a council house. The council has re reached a decision um, with your homeless application. And I'm pleased to say that we have accepted your case, okay? the council have agreed to help you. You did write numerous letters to the council, okay? So it's, it's for that reason that I've come to that conclusion. Oh, thank you so much. The council will now work with you um, to look for a private rented accommodation for you, okay? What does that mean? Are we going back to the system that, that put us okay. in this situation? Yeah. A lot of people think that they come to the council, when the council assists them, they will get council accommodation, and that's not the case anymore. We are allowed to discharge via private rented accommodation. All that process we went through now, the eviction, the moving to bed and breakfast. We're we're this is part of the homeless eviction there. Landlord again, which we're probably going to struggle to pay on a regular basis with our situation. And then, and then after maybe a few months or a year, we're going to have sorry, to go I'm through I'm going to stop you there. I'm sorry. Okay? Yeah. It's not putting you back to zero, OK? In this case, the council have agreed to help you. We will help you find private rented accommodation, which will accept housing benefit. OK? All right. I just... Everything is overwhelming, you know? I'm sorry. All right. Thank you for coming in today. Just because we're nice people, we don't go in there and shout with them. We don't go there and start, you know, uh, fighting with them. They just treat you the way they want. This is, I say to her, this is, you're taking us back to where we started. For them, they just take another family that they help, but it's, it's not really help, is it? 
The family will stay in temporary accommodation until the council can find them a private landlord who will accept housing benefit. I have no hope anymore. I have no hope there. By placing um, clients within the private rental sector, we have a better chance of meeting their needs. However, this is not the council accommodation for life that many people want or expect. I'm going. I'm not, it's, I, 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 in a way I'm kind of, oh shit. In a way I'm kind of sad that I didn't get to live in England and get to see all of England. But I feel good because I'd rather be going where I am than be on the streets in England, so. After 10 months in London, Lisa's heading back to Bermuda. Housing wouldn't help me, the council refused me, so no. It's not that easy as everybody thinks it is. Now it's time to go home. We are seeing an increase in applications from overseas. We do not have the supply, we do not have the homes to put them. The situation can only get worse and we will expect to see those numbers simply grow and grow.